from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. And uh, we're coming back this morning with a story an awful lot of people are talking about. And as always, we'll invite you to join in the conversation. Um, we're talking about uh, the verdict that came down on Friday of a very closely watched case here in Davidson County, Tennessee, involving um, former Vanderbilt nurse Redonda Vaught. As you know, she was uh, on trial, uh, accused of giving uh, the uh, wrong medicine to a patient ended up ultimately leading to the death of Charlene Murphy back in 2017. Finally, the, the case went to trial last week. After four hours of deliberation, uh, Vaught was found guilty of criminally negligent homicide and gross neglect of an impaired adult. Uh, not guilty of another charge originally, which was brought, which was reckless homicide. Let's be clear here. No one ever said that Redonda Vaught intentionally killed this woman. Um, the question was, what was the level of recklessness? Um, what did it go to? Negligence. That's how it came back. Uh, there has been an awful lot of reaction to it on both sides of the issue here. And uh, what we're going to do this week is try to uh, give voice to a lot of folks with some of the strong opinions here. We've got uh, the calls out. Remember, this verdict came down Friday and over the weekend we've been working on it. We hope uh, before the end of this week to hear from members of the Tennessee Nursing Association. Uh, we also will reach out to Peter Stryance, uh, the attorney for Redonda Vaught and Redonda Vaught herself, if uh, they'd be willing to come on the program later this week. We would uh, welcome them. We expect to have Clint Kelly, a well-known local malpractice attorney who can get into the basics of it. He was not involved in this case on as well this week, but want to be clear that we're seeking all angles on this. And included in that, of course, will be the prosecutor um, who headed up this case, not Glenn Funk. He is the district attorney here in Davidson County. And yes, ultimately, it was his decision to bring charges against Vaught, but the prosecutor in the courtroom was Chad Jackson, and he joins us this morning. Thank you for coming on, sir. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Want to remind folks that uh, we're not only on News Channel 5 Plus right now, but we're also streaming live on Facebook at newschannel5.com. I'll monitor that, and if any of you have uh, questions or comments there, I'll try to draw from that and ask them of the assistant DA. So, where do we start on all this? I guess one of the questions I've heard time and again, not only after the verdict, but even before this, can you give us an idea? How is it that you, General Funk, and the DA's office came to the decision? How do you decide the line between criminality and professional negligence in regard to this nurse? Well, this case wasn't just about simple professional negligence. It was gross neglect of a patient. And when you look at the statute, you have to see that, in, order, in this case, Redonda Vaught failed to provide adequate services to Charlene Murphy, thus resulting in her death. Uh, and the homicide charge is that she deviated so far from the standard of care and fell so far below the standard of care that she was grossly negligent in that regard, leading to Charlene Murphy's death. So you concede that mistakes happen. We're all human. We all make mistakes. Uh, nurses will make mistakes. Doctors will make mistakes. Does that mean that this was just so beyond the pale? Is that the point? I mean, because you can make the point that this verdict implies that uh, medicine needs to be a, a you know a zero air practice, which you know is an impossibility. Well, I can't comment on the the error of medicine that's acceptable. I can only comment on the facts that I gave to the jury and what the jury found in their verdict, but this was not just simple negligence, it was gross negligence. Um, and in cases like this, where it's a culmination of several different things that, that went far beyond just one error or one oversight or one misstep. All right, so if you would, can, yeah, I guess that kind of defines it. Simple, what would be an example maybe in your mind of a simple negligence on behalf of a nurse? Maybe missing one or two uh, warnings, something like that? I, I think we'd have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, so uh, what made this one gross negligence? And I guess, you know, you've made the point, at least in court, that there were not one, not two, not three, but maybe more than a dozen uh, fail-safes that were bypassed? Yes, and, and, and the terminology I think is important. It's not just gross negligence, it's gross neglect. Gross neglect. So um, it's, a, it's a different standard. It's, it's looking at the situation completely different. But yes, at, at the end of the day, at the end of this trial, there were about 17 things that Redonda Vaught either failed to do or ignored or overlooked, uh, which directly led to the death of Charlene Murphy. All right. And 
The target was Redon Devot, obviously, in this most recent trial, but a lot of people point out, and uh, the defense certainly did, why is it Redon Devot? What about Vanderbilt Medical Center? I mean, what blame do they deserve in this case? And I think a lot of people would say they, they are very much a part of this. Could you not have brought charges against someone within the medical system there? In this case, it was all of the actions of Redon Devot. Vanderbilt did not put that medication in her hand. Vanderbilt did not make her override the system. Vanderbilt did not cause her not to verify or check the medication she was about to give to a patient. Uh, Vanderbilt may not be completely faultless in this, but when it comes down to what Redon Devot did, it is far exceeds everything. Uh, in her circumstance, on that day, she did almost nothing to protect Charlene Murphy as a part of her education and training and everything she knows as a nurse and a healthcare professional to do. Now, you concede she did not intentionally kill this woman. That's correct. She did not. So, I guess the argument was that she, I mean, why would then, from the prosecution point of view, um, a qualified nurse who seemed to be respected and, and liked behave in such a manner that you just described? I have no idea. It's just Could it have something to do with the fact that maybe Vanderbilt or hospitals in general these days have nursing staffs that are so overworked that they're rushed and that, you know, timeliness is of essence because that's tied with profitability, taking a backseat to safety? In this case, it's important to understand that this was pre-pandemic. Now, the healthcare system was still busy back then, but it was nothing like it's been in the last two years. And Nurse Vaught or Redonda Vaught was a help all nurse that day, which means that Vanderbilt was adequately staffed in their neuro ICU. They weren't, they, their acuity to patient care is like one nurse per two to three. So they are covered on the nursing, covered on the patients, and Miss Vaught was supposed to help. And all she had to do was run some tasks to help other nurses accomplish their jobs. She had no patients to take care of that day. Okay. Um, I think we have some images, too. There was one I think the DA's office released. I don't know if Mary Elena can call that up yet. It's not of the graphic yet. We'll show that later of some of the points. But the, uh, the, the, the tap top, the warning um, image, do we have that that we can show? Um, as you said, there were a lot. Of, there it is, the, uh, the warning, paralyzing agent. That, that, for instance, can you talk about what that image is and what that's about there? That is the top of the Vecaronium bromide bottle. Okay. And it, it is the last fail-safe before you administer that drug to see what you're doing, to know that there is that warning screaming out to you because what Redon Devot had to do was not just take the cap and blindly stab a needle into it. She had to stab a needle into the, the center part, which is essentially a bullseye. Meaning you would see that. You would have to see that because she had to clean it. As uh, the expert witness we had testified, she would have had to swabbed it with alcohol. So the first time she touched it, she would have held the bottle in her hand, and this is maybe a little demonstration. Okay. This is a okay. little bit bigger. I got it okay. from your set over there. Okay. Um, she would have had to have swabbed the hold top. On, of hold it. on, we'll come back to a shot here. Um, he has a bottle there. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. So, all right, talk Just about that. Just about th about this size, um, a little bit smaller actually. But she would have had to have swabbed the top of the the bottle, the vial with alcohol. Okay. Then she would have had to taken the saline syringe and the needle and injected it into the bottle and pushed all 10 milliliters into it while she's looking at the top mm -hmm. through that blue rubber part, which is the stopper, with all around the edge saying warning paralytic. Then she would have had to have taken the syringe out, set it down, reconstituted the medicine by rolling it around. So it's in her hands and she's rolling it around. It's still in front of her face, oscillating as she's seeing this, but she's not paying attention to it. She has to then take the syringe, put it back inside, pull up the medicine and pull it all out and then that were the three times she had to see that warning before she gave that medicine to Charlene Murphy. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of the comments posted, and as I said, there's been a lot of reaction on both sides. A lot of people agree with the verdict, many do not, uh, especially those within the nursing profession. Some have, have made the point, uh, you've, certainly there are alerts and warnings. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much the DA's office kind of tried to look into the culture of nursing and, and how it's evolved and how things are now. I know you said, and you make a good point, it's, it's gotten more difficult through the pandemic. But I mean, I, I've heard um, some say that it's to the point now that there are so many unnecessary, according to some, quote, alerts or warnings. They're everywhere at the hospital these days, that they're, they're, there's something known almost as alert fatigue. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to make an excuse here, but I mean, when you see that everywhere, did, did you consider that under those circumstances? Does that come into play? All of those things are for patient safety. Mm -hmm. And if the healthcare community thinks 
that those are important because, uh, you know, it's happened before. They need to put a warning up to make sure it doesn't happen again. That's quality improvement that goes on constantly in healthcare. I think the warnings are necessary. And mm -hmm. it's, it's all about patient safety. And had, had proper patient safety and protocols been followed, Charlene Murphy would still be alive today. And before we go to break, let me just ask you this question moving forward. A lot of those, especially in the nursing community who followed this verdict, have said, okay, now this is a difficult situation because it's going to cause a chilling effect. It's going to drive nurses from the profession more so than they already are leaving because they're going to be looking over their shoulder worrying, gosh, under this stress of what I'm in a very stressful job, if I make a mistake, I could end up being charged and facing jail time if convicted. Um, do you believe it's to that level, or in your mind, is this case such an outlier that it's, it's very, very rare and that it should not be taken that way by others in the nursing, nursing right. profession? Nurses do not do what Redonda Vaught did. This is the only case that I am aware of where there is a patient death as a result of such a medication error combined with everything that Redon Vaught did. This, this is a one in a decade or more type of case, so I don't think nurses doing their jobs need to be worried about the gross neglect to the extent that Redonda Vaught committed in this case. We'll take a break on that note. When we come back, uh, we've got phone calls that have come in. I'm sure we have some folks that we're going to put some hard questions to you as well, which is fine. Um, and we also have many comments coming in right now on Facebook. I will try to share some of your questions or comments with him there. Just for those of you, I'm going to nip it in the bud as we go to each break. Just so you know, we have the district attorney prosecutor from this case on this morning. We hope to have the Tennessee Nursing Association representatives on tomorrow. We also are seeking to have Redonda Vaught and her attorney, Peter Stryance, on. Uh, they're going to be on individual shows unto themselves. So we're going to try to cover this as fairly as we can on all angles. I know a lot of people have strong opinions. We'll take a break. We'll be back more with Chad Jackson, the assistant district attorney that prosecuted and convicted Redon Devot, coming back right after this.